I am Gina Swire, self-love expert, mentor and manifesting queen. I'm on a mission to help a billion people to feel self-love in my lifetime. So I've been on this mission for about five years, probably longer, but that was when I first admitted it to myself. And it found me like I, I believe that I didn't really choose this path. Like it found me and it's just every day I'm totally committed to it. I absolutely live, breathe, sleep, eat everything about self-love. I've just written a book about it called PS I Love Me, which is the name of this workshop today. It's the first time I've ever used that title publicly. So you're getting a little first look at that. And yeah, for the last five years, I've been um, teaching everyone I know, everyone who's interested about it, um, all about self-love and doing that through retreats in Bali, Ibiza, England, Portugal would have been last week, but it got cancelled because of Corona and um, online workshops, webinars, courses, and then just in general day to day life, you know, sitting next to someone on a train ending up in a deep and meaningful conversation with them, showing them what they've not seen about themselves. It's like a natural thing that just kind of happens. And I absolutely love it. I'm completely fascinated by what makes people happy, what makes them sad, and why this is such a massive deal in the world. Because underneath it all, I honestly believe everything that we're trying to achieve comes back down on a deeper layer to self-love everything every every area of life if we break it down comes back to self-love and the more i go into this message the more i go into this world the more i realize that and the more i teach that and the more i realize i don't know as well so it's that kind of like the more you know the, the less you know kind of vibe um, so in this workshop today i really wanted to create a container um, to practice some of these things because often I'm teaching a lot of concepts, which I am going to teach some concepts today, share some concepts. Um, but often it's just the fact we don't practice them that means we aren't connecting with self-love. So today my intention is to have you actually practice some of this stuff. So I hope you'll join in and be interactive. I was hoping the chat was going to work, but Never mind, we can make it work, whatever. Uh, Gina, they can, they can message the hosts. Uh, the, the, uh, the messaging between the participants has been disabled by the organizers. Do you necessarily want them to be able to uh, uh, chat within themselves as well, or you just want them to chat with you? I wanted them to be able to chat so everyone can see it in the chat box. Okay, okay. But if not, it's fine. I can adapt because I'm flexible. <laughs> okay, we'll go on. Yeah, so um, what you see now of me isn't always how it was. And I know, I know a few of you on this call, so you, you know um, how, it, how it goes. Uh, yeah, so sometimes people look at me on social media or even message me and say, you know, if I looked like you or if I had what you have, I would love myself too. And it's kind of infuriating to me because 10 years ago, I had a lot on the outside world. I looked very similar, you know, it was all kind of the same, but I didn't feel anything like in the inside. And so this is really the journey. And when people come to me now and they're like, oh my God, how am I ever going to love my body like that? How am I ever going to create what I really want in my life? How am I ever going to be free? I'm like, you can do it. Like if I can do it, you can do it. And now in the results, so I've been teaching a lot of other ladies of different, and men of different, um, all different backgrounds, all different, um, IQ levels. This was a big thing for me. I used to think I wasn't intelligent enough to, to do all these things I wanted to do. Um, looking all different ways, and it works for everyone. So it's nothing about the outside. It's all about the inside. It's a complete inside job. And even deeper than that, it's like a soul job. So I'm going to be coming on to this more as well. Um, okay, I was going to use the chat box for that. I'm obviously not now. Oh, no. 
it's working now. Yay. Thank you. I mean, amazing. It's so good. Yes, that's good. Um, so why do you think I'm interested to know, I'm curious to know from you guys this morning, why do you think this is such a big issue in the world? Why do you think people don't love themselves? And just post it into the chat. Just have a little think about it, post it into the chat. Or why do you not? Or what stands in the way? And welcome to people joining last minute. So please, you made it. Um, so I've just asked everyone to post into the chat. Why is this such a massive problem in the world? Why do you think people are disconnected from self-love or don't even know what that is? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So when I was a teenager, I was always quite confident as a, as a kid. And then going into kind of teenage years, I lost it. it. It was something that I used to be confident and then everything kind of took over. The self took, took over. Um, the stories I was telling myself took over. Um, the school I was in kind of made out that I wasn't like the most intelligent or, you know, I didn't fit into the boxes that school and society had set out for intelligence and all these things. And so I just took it that I was kind of like just a number and not very good at anything really. Um, but actually what I now realize is that I am actually quite good at things and it, it just wasn't socially accepted to be connected to angels and to have intuition and, you know, to have even, um, you know, being able to be streetwise and these kind of skills, they weren't really like acknowledged when I was a kid and, or a teenager. And so it made me feel like I was just kind of uh, nothing, like not enough. And yeah, so definitely part of my mission is to bring some of that into schools and show people that there's many other ways to, to measure everything. And, and, you know, that's a big part of my passion. So having gone through that time in life, um, I then got scouted for modeling. So around the age of 17, I, was, I went to this S Club 7 festival, if anyone knows who S Club 7 are. I went to an S Club 7 festival at 17. And when I came out, this man came over and gave me this thing. And he was like, we would really like you to be a model with our agency. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, that would be amazing. But oh my God, I'm totally not, you know, I'm not thin enough. I'm not beautiful enough. I'm not this enough. I'm not that enough. All these things came up. Um, anyway, carried on getting scouted for modeling, got scouted a few different times and everyone around me was like, why don't you go in and, um, you know, actually do this. And so when I went in, and I know there's a few people in this group who know this already, uh, but it's worth saying because it is part of the journey and it's part of the reason why self-love found me. So I went into this modeling agency and they told me, um, we love you, um, but you are too big. You're too heavy was the word they used. You're too heavy. Can you lose a dress size in weight, you know, like a, a stone in weight, which is a, a lot, um, in two weeks, come back and we'll sign you up. And so I literally died on the spot and I was like, oh my God, this is the worst news ever. I'm not going to be able to do that. Um, if I could lose a stone in weight, I would have done it by now. You know, it was, it was all these stories coming up in my mind. And so I decided, look, I'm not going to do it. Fast forward a little bit and I did get scouted again and they, it was by the same agency and they asked me to go back in and become a plus size model to which I was really 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 like embarrassed about because they wanted me then to put on a stone in weight or a dress size in weight and I was like oh my god that it's kind of you know I think I was about 18 by then imagine um I mean, I know some people in the world do want to gain weight. That has never been my, my story personally, and probably most people. Um, and they asked me to add on a dress size in weight, a stone in weight. 
oh, oh my God. So I was like, oh, wow, I don't want to do that. So I said no, but they still signed me up as a plus size model. And so then I went into the industry and every modeling job I would turn up to, I wasn't big enough. So they used to put on me this, um, like a fat suit, like padding. So <laughs> I would go into work and they'd put on me this kind of padded suit and then the clothes on top and I would just look like, um, and I kind of felt awful, you know, I, I didn't feel great. And I had all this talk and they're like, oh yeah, you look amazing. You look amazing. I'm thinking, oh my God. I, the first time I saw some of these pictures was on the side of a bus or on a billboard or in a magazine and, you know, my street cred, I felt was going down and down and down. Although it was this kind of weird universe of, um, yeah, of, of that I was being successful in what I was doing and I became the face of ASOS Curve and I was, I got signed in New York and I was working with Macy's and some, you know, kind of well-known brands. So I was doing really, really well, but I was feeling, oh my God, I am, this is the worst thing ever. So I was in this kind of parallel universe. So you can imagine what my self-talk was like, having had a history of kind of bad self-talk, self-taught was getting incredibly worse and this went on and on and on and on all through my 20s and um did incredibly well traveled the world had all the best things lived in all these different apartments around the world and went to the best parties and had or you know always a big blow dry and i always looked this the part and a lot of good things were happening to me but i felt this like real deep um mm. emptiness inside of me and so maybe some of you can relate on some level in your past or even now, maybe there's like a little space within you where you just feel there's something else. And so um, after a long time of this, I started to study nutrition because I was getting more and more unhealthy. I was numbing myself with everything possible, like alcohol, like um, a lot of chocolate, a lot of carbs. Um, a lot, of, <clears throat> a lot of partying, a lot of staying up late, a lot of not never being on my own, a lot of being really busy, traveling the world, all these things. I was like numbing, 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 numbing. And um, yeah, and I, I was getting more and more unhealthy and I could see like my glow was kind of like leaving me. It had left. I would look at my pictures and think, oh, who is that? Her eyes, there's nothing in her eyes. Like I would see these massive pictures in Vogue and things of me. And I'd be like, Oh my God, I know for a fact that I'd been out till six in the morning that day. And then prayed to God that there was a good makeup artist and then gone into the shoot. And, you know, I could see it in my face. And so eventually I realized that, you know what, this, this isn't good. This isn't good. I need to go study nutrition. So I went study nutrition at this place in New York, didn't do any research, which is typical Gina um, style. I was like, yeah, that, that's it. Let's do that. And so um, joined this nutrition course and went into it, turned up on the first day, realized that this course was not actually a, a personal nutrition course like I thought it was. It was actually, um, <laughs> it was actually a health coaching course. So it was actually like basically teaching you to design a business and help people to become more healthy through helping yourself to be healthy. And I was like, oh no, I've just paid like six grand for this course that isn't even the right thing. And now I've completely messed up and oh my God, what am I going to do? This is a disaster. Anyway, luckily the universe did have my back as always. The universe has our back and was pushing me onto my path. And so I started doing these classes and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to skip all the business modules because it's not of interest to me. I'm a busy model. Like who might, when am I ever going to have time for any of this? No, no, no. Anyway, did the, did the classes and, and quickly realized like, Oh, this is really interesting. Oh, actually I've always wanted to work with people and food. And I actually did want to be a teacher before I got scouted for modeling and I actually did want to do all these things and I started to like wake up to that I'd been in this path for so long that had found me this modeling path and people around me had been, you should do that. That'd be good for you. Do that. Make hay while the sun shines, you know, all these kind of things. 
And I'd just been like, oh yeah, I should do that. I should do that. And it was good. You know, it was good. It took me on my path and I really enjoyed some parts of it. And it, it taught me a lot, but did I actually want to do it? No, I had no interest in fashion for, for 14 years. I had faked it. I thought I had to fake it that I cared about fashion. And so I would turn up to these castings and they'd be like, who's your favorite designer? And I'd be like, mm, da, 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 da. And, and actually I couldn't care less. So I just started to strip away all these stories and realize like what's actually important to me. So you can see already I was moving closer to like harmony. I'd come away from harmony into this life that I thought I should have realized I wasn't so healthy in it. Wasn't, wasn't loving it, felt this kind of void, like it just wasn't really happening. And then came into this kind of like new way of life of like actually getting to know myself and understand myself. And um, yeah, eventually I was like, you know what? Well, I'll tell you the real truth. Seeing as Glastonbury Festival is on right now and I was watching it last night. Don't know if anyone was watching it, but I was at Glastonbury one year and I went absolutely bonkers. Like, I pretty much didn't sleep for the whole of the festival. And I was like, whoa, Gina, what is going on? Who are you? Like, who is this person? I was just like, ah, crazy person at Glastonbury. I lost all my friends on the first day, pretty much didn't see them the whole week. And I kept thinking like, who are you? Who are you? And honestly, I didn't really know at that point. I didn't know who I was. I'd gone so far away from my path. I was just on this complete like letting rip thing. And that was the finale of my old life. And so after Glastonbury, I felt so awful. I literally got back to London and booked a flight to Spain. That day I got up, went to Spain. I was like, I can't be here, can't be here. I went to Spain and I just sat there and I was like, that's it. I'm done. I quit. I quit my life. And so I did. I quit everything, quit modeling, quit New York, quit traveling, quit all my old friends, quit drinking, went vegan, quit, quit, quit everything I could possibly quit in my entire life that didn't kill me. That was my thing. Just, I don't know what I'm doing, but that isn't it anymore. So I quit everything and basically cleared a big space in my life, which I'm going to come on to for you guys in a minute clearing, 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 quit, quit, quit. And then just sat, I bought a house in Manchester and just sat in this house on my own in the middle of a park with no friends anymore, no nothing, nothing to numb myself. That was my rule. I was like, I'm not going to numb this, not going to numb it. Yeah. So there I am in my house and, um, yeah, I was waking up in the morning and I was like, Oh my God, now what do I do? Who am I? What do I do with my day? What is this life? And all these things are coming to me. You know, those, those questions. I don't know. Are you, are you ever asking yourself those questions? <laughs> or is that just me? <laughs> yeah, I can see a few nods. Okay, so I'm asking myself all these really deep questions. And, you know, I'm there on my, on my lounge floor. I had no furniture in my house. And I'm there, like, on the floor, just, like, sobbing. Being like, oh my God, no, this really hurts. But what hurt? What could hurt? There's nothing to hurt anymore. Just lying there like, ah, God. And um, yeah, did that for a few weeks, a few months actually, or a few lifetimes. And then finally in came these like more interesting thoughts like, do you know, what if you have been trying to change your whole life and who you are, and you've been trying to be this person you think you need to be in the world, what if you don't need to be that? What if you just get to be you? And I was like, oh my God, that would be really weird. If I w and then I was kind of questioning like, ah, oh, if I just get to be me, then what do I do in the world? Like, what do I do with my mind? All these years I've been trying to lose weight, gain weight, be more intelligent, be, you know, more, eloquent, be able to do all these things, like be more interesting, more or less of something and this and that. Been trying to be all these things for so long. Like what happens if I just don't? Yeah. And silence, nothing, nada, like zilch, nothing was there. It's like, right, okay, this is really weird, really, really weird. And I suddenly started to realize that I can then just consciously 
create. I can consciously bring in whatever I want. And that was the moment, honestly, that self-love found me. It was like, everything that you need is already inside of you. That's it. And I was like, oh, right. Okay. Oh yeah. There you go. Institute of Integrated Nutrition. That's what I was doing. That was it. <laughs> You've obviously been there too. Yeah. So if anyone wants to take that course, I highly, highly recommend it. Highly, even though I didn't want it and it wanted me, but I highly recommend recommend it it's a year course it's amazing um yeah so all these downloads came to me and all these like new questions and straight away my body just shedded a big layer so this sounds like some kind of marketing ploy it's totally not um my body went from a uk size 16 to a uk size 12 in two weeks it was literally like skin suit removal like just lost my all my weight I'd been hanging on to all this for so long yeah and I didn't have anything to be I didn't have anything to be scared of anymore I didn't have anything to, to prove I didn't have anything to do so it just like it just melted away and the light came back on in my eyes so I was looking at myself in the mirror and I was like oh my god you're an, you're like a a cosmic angel being from another planet and like just remember one day just catching my eye in the mirror and just staring at myself in the mirror. And if you've not done this for a while or ever, I highly, highly recommend it. Go to the mirror and just stare at yourself for like five minutes and just see what happens. And I was like, whoa, is that who, which one is looking at me? Like, which one is me? <laughs> yeah. So I was having all these kind of trippy, weird experiences and straight away after that, people just started to ask me, um, Gina, like, can you do that to me? <laughs> can you teach me um, how to do what you're doing right now? So I was like, uh, not really. I don't really know what's going on, but I can try. And so I started kind of teaching people. And at first I felt it was about nutrition because I'd been doing all this nutrition stuff. And then after a few months of that, I realized that actually, no, it's not about nutrition that's a part of it. But ultimately, this is the step before it. So when people come to me and they think self-love is self-care, which it's absolutely not, that's a part of it. They think, and I did at one point, they think that it's, or maybe you think this, it's about doing your yoga, it's about being disciplined, it's about having your green juice, it's about, you know, doing your meditation every day. Yeah, but underneath all that, there's a step before that which has to come, and then that becomes a doddle. So there's a few people on this call who are in some of my groups, and they will know because they've experienced it that self-love is the thing that prevents you having to use your willpower. So for many, many, many years, I was like trying to force myself to do good things for myself. And it was really hard. Can anyone relate to that? It being hard to do these self-care things. Yeah. So to make it easy for yourself, and honestly, I'm quite a lazy human underneath it all. Like I like things to be nice and easy. And that's my mantra. My motto in life is easy and fun. Anything that's not easy and fun, I'm very unlikely to stick to it. So just the fact that I've managed to change my life around, bring in all these good things, make this huge business that I now run that helps people and, you know, impact and in income is like, it's not because I've been like grinding. It's not because I've been making myself do it. It's because I've changed this self-love piece and then everything like naturally unfolds from there. Yeah. So I started teaching people about it and um, immediately I would see that like the, the results with people. So it's just grown and grown and grown. And over the last five years, I've gone from, you know, just a personal transformation to now helping thousands and thousands of people to do this within themselves. And I love it. I love, 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 love it. On the first day of a retreat, on the first day of a course, on the first day of a coaching program, on whatever, people come to me and they're, and they're sometimes like, I'm a little bit more fucked up than you are. Um, so this isn't going to work for me. Or, you know, I'm beyond repair. So gosh, you know, probably won't work for me. Or, you know, people love to tell me why self-love won't work for them. 
And of course, I know that it works for everyone. There's not one single person that I've ever worked with who hasn't had a self-love transformation. And um, yeah, so it's, it's like this amazing, amazing process. It doesn't actually depend on anything on the outside world. I believe, I really honestly believe from my core that it helps and heals every single person. And I watch that happen on my day, every day. Yeah, so some of the reasons why it's, um, we don't love ourselves. And I think this comes down to three main things. Number one is conditioning. So the way we're conditioned, the what we learn at school, even, you know, our parents' generation. And I grew up in a town called Blackpool in England. And it's not a very forward thinking town, let me tell you. So I often live in LA or in Bali and I consider them to be quite forward thinking towns and quite, you know, consciously aware and people are working on this stuff. Where I am now and where I grew up is not one of those <laughs> at all. It's very not, it's very the opposite. Um, yeah, so that's why I'm here now because I'm bringing that back here at the moment but conditioning from Southport hello everyone hello people in England and beyond um conditioning is huge you know we are not taught I was taught that you know if someone loves themselves that's a negative thing oh he loves himself he does oh she oh she loves herself too much that one you know these kind of things and many many more things but also just not having outlets for people to shine in their own way it's kind of about um education in terms of uh how what's that word i can't think of how how um um no that word you know how thingy you are when you're at school if you're if you're that at school then you're good or if you're really sporty my school was really sporty so if you were like really good at you know hitting a piece of wood on a piece of leather around a football pitch or like if you were good at hockey um then you were like worthy you know and that's so weird to me like why is that a thing like what who cares about kicking a piece of leather around a football pitch not me um yeah so conditioning is one of the things and then history his historically um and sometimes i tell this on retreats and people are just like whoa it was only 50 years ago in England that the last woman was burnt at the stake. 50 years ago. 50. Like, let that land. Women were burnt at the stake for being like me, and probably you as well, for being, you know, like wanting something better for the life, having intuition, for using crystals. Like I'm literally sat here with all my crystals now. Like I would totally have been burnt at the stake for this. Um, anyone with like a message, anyone who was connected to their womb wisdom or their intuition or any of that, they were just like, oh my God, this is too much. Like we have to kill them. We have to kill them. That's it. Burn them at the stake. Um, yeah. So when you think about that and you will see why people, especially women, like I know men also struggle with these things like i have a lot of men who follow me even though i tend to speak mostly to women um men love to follow me because they're like oh i'm getting something that maybe isn't meant for me but now i get to learn some things and i love that i love 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 it um yeah so it's no surprise really when you think of that that people are scared to shine because we would have been burnt for that or worse you know women have been enslaved and used as been raped and killed, burnt at the stake yeah so there's a lot of history playing out and i've been spending a lot of time with my mum and my nana recently during you know being back home because of lockdown and some of the things that they say i just realized like oh yeah that that's that's why you know that's why um and then the other thing is to do with um the this focus that I think the media and a lot of people kind of put on self-care so like going to the gym and eating healthily and all the diet culture and you know it's all very based on the outside and self-care is kind of like an out an exterior thing in a way I know it's about the interior but this massive focus on self-care actually kind of draws us away from what I think is the real truth, which is underneath that, which is the self-love message. And 
in one way it's like the chicken and the egg because you know if you are going to the gym and you're drinking your green juice or you're doing your yoga and you're really caring for yourself then that is helping you to love yourself but then and it also makes you feel good which raises your vibration and you know it's all linked to self-love but actually when we love ourselves from that in that like inner pot that infinite world that overflows at any time that we all have inside of ourselves we can all connect to at any time it's only one thought away when we actually bring the self care from that place it's so much easier it's so much more like aligned and i see quite often you know people join myself love groups and they'll be like right from now on i'm going to meditate one hour a day I'm going to go to the gym every day i'm going to do this every day and i'm like ooh, that is like could be good but probably not because it's probably coming from that place of i have to change myself to feel good um which could work you know but when it comes from this place of um you know, what can I bring my body today or what can I serve to myself today? Then it, it comes from a much more natural place. I'm going to come on to this further in a minute. Um, yeah. So also there's this little piece about, um, empowerment and disempowerment. So most people live in a normal state of like disempowerment. And this looks like, you know, the world's happening around me, to me. Um, I just kind of get to go along with what happens. And, you know, when something, when something bad happens, that, that really affects us. And we don't really have any say in that. And even like our body, everything, we just kind of like have this disempowered feeling. We don't feel we have any choices. We feel everything's being chosen for us. Whereas the empowered way is very much like I'm create. I'm the creator. I'm creating everything. I have a choice in everything. I get to choose how I react to everything. My inner world is my responsibility, and I'm in control of that. The outside world is never our responsibility, or we're not in control of that. But our inner world, we are. So I like to move people into this empowered um, feeling by showing people that you always have a choice. Um, and you always have full control of what happens on your inner world. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's a really beautiful process. And I see people go in this switch in my courses. I have this course called the 12 step self love transformation. And there's a few ladies in it that are in the call. So well done for showing up today, even more. They love it, love it, love it. Um, yeah. So in the 12 step self love transformation, one of the, mo a whole module is around choices. And I think this is for a lot of people where the big shift happens because the whole module is about showing you that you always have a choice. And when we think we don't is when we become disempowered and we think we have no you know, we, we disconnect from our power, which our powerful state, our empowered state, our loving state, our harmonized state, that's our natural state. So ha giving us the, these choices back uh, and showing us, reframing it to the fact that we always have a choice of how we deal with our inner world um, changes everything. It changes the game for everyone. So when I get the feedback, they're off, often they're like, oh my God, the choices module just blew my mind. Yeah. So I'm just reminding you right now that we do have a choice. And if there's any areas of your life where you're like, well, yeah, we do have a choice, but I don't have a choice about that. Or I don't have a choice about that. It's like, we are creating this for a reason. So it's, it's interesting to look at it and you can do some journaling about some of these things. If anything's coming up for you, that maybe a little voice is coming up like, yeah, I don't have a choice about that. So do some journaling about it because underneath it, on some level, there's some choosing happening, which can be quite confronting, I know. Um, okay, so, oh yeah, and the empowered question is, why is this happening for me? And the disempowered question is, why is this happening to me? So yeah, you can have a look into that. Um, so also in the 12 steps, so this is something that I've created to help people 
basically, because there's so much that goes into this self-love message. And I was doing a lot of coaching and a lot of groups and a lot of retreats and more and more and more people were wanting to learn about this and, and discover <clears throat> the, the key to what makes people happy. And so I built this course, the 12 step self-love transformation so that more people can take it basically. Cause I was out of hours in my week. Um, so just to give you an idea of what goes into that, the modules go like this. Forgiveness, this is always the first thing, clearing the space, and we're going to come on to this in a minute. Forgiveness, trust and intuition, so reconnecting us with the universal powers of trust and that everything's happening for us, for our greater good, for the greater good of humanity, and intuition, which I find if we're lacking in self-love, intuition is like disconnected, so there's a whole module about intuition blocks so what is actually standing in the way and like i said right at the beginning of this call um i was looking at myself and i just looked a bit fuzzy and i just needed to wipe my camera so it's like one of those ones like what's in the way of you seeing yourself really clearly and how can we wipe that away really quickly and easily to create clarity so blocks i mean it goes into a lot more detail than wiping my camera screen but blocks is massively in there emotions so this is about emotional intelligence and how as a whole um we're pretty disconnected from emotions obviously you lot and because you're in this work and you're in this festival you'll be more connected than most to your emotions i'm sure um but to give you a little outline of this recently i'd been doing some videos and something was happening in my life and i was actually crying on my social media at one point and a man emailed me to tell me that i was actually bipolar and i needed to be medicated and actually suggested the medicine that i should be taking and i was like wow that what a shame that you know the world doesn't allow like humans to have a full range of emotions because honestly i've spent five years or longer reconnecting with my emotions um and i would never want to lose that and so this module is about showing that we're emotional beings and we have this full range of emotions and um yeah it's actually good to to show that and that gives people to permission to be more of themselves as well so emotions self-talk self-talk is huge because you know if whatever you're trying to do um, and if you think about the last time you were trying to do something that was a bit edgy, like for me, launching a new program or, you know, talking to that person you fancy or whatever it is that's a little bit edgy for you, you will probably have that self-talk, like that self-doubt um, voice. And actually befriending this self-talk voice is one of the most powerful self-love techniques that... I could share with you. And so that's massively in the course. Comparison, comparison's the thief, thief of joy. If we're comparing ourselves to our past self, our future self, or any other beings in this world, we're literally stealing our own joy. And a lot of people think that this is constructive criticism. Um, and we're kind of con conditioned to see that as constructive criticism. But actually, um, most humans work really well when were, you know when you have that positive voice when someone's really holding space for your best self they see more in you than you do in yourself yet and this negative like self-talk voice is actually detrimental to that so um yeah befriending the self-talk huge shifts when that happens um body acceptance this is a huge thing with self-love you know I, I think there's not one person in the world who doesn't have some sort of body hang up or hasn't had a body hang up or multiple body hang ups. Uh, so it's a huge thing that we go into. Self-worth, which I'm going to come on to in a minute. Choices, relationships. Once we've got this amazing relationship with ourself, it's much easier and better and more effective to have relationships with people on the outside, like family, like children, like friends, like partners. Um, you know, the whole, everyone benefits when you reconnect with self-love with yourself, everybody benefits on the outside. So it's like really raising the vibration of everyone. Um, yeah, I call it realization ships because you realize so much when you go into relationship. And then the tough times, there's a whole thing in there about dark night of the soul. Has anyone ever experienced a dark night of the soul or like depression or anything like that? <laughs> Put your hand up. 
<laughs> oh my god yes we're all human yes great fantastic yeah i experienced really my first one of those about two years ago didn't know what the hell was happening i was just like oh my god nothing that i normally do to help myself feel better is working i was just like going into this dark hole um so i've written a whole um power, uh, a whole uh, module about what to do in that time um and really the the essence of that is like you just need to love the fuck out of yourself <laughs> that's it that's all there is there's a lot of other helpful tips as well but that's the main one um and then a lot of people ask me on a daily basis like how do i connect to my power how do i be in my power every single day and how do i like find my purpose these kind of questions and so um yeah i wrote this whole thing about how to how to connect to your purpose because i believe that when you do your inner work and when you follow the breadcrumbs and when you follow what lights you up and turns you on in your life you are already living in your purpose and that's when your purpose finds you so is there anyone in this in this call who's who's looking for their purpose at the moment we hand up if there is Ooh. Juicy. Okay. Well, you're in the right place. You're taking the first, well, I'm sure you've taken many steps this weekend and before. Um, yeah. When you're doing the inner self work, you are, go, you walk in your path and you're on your way to your purpose. And I honestly believe, yeah, it's like this two way road. It finds you. Okay. So like I said, we're going to come on to some practical things. And so this workshop is called PS I Love Me Advanced Self Love Techniques. So the first thing that I want to share with you is the two questions, kind of similar questions, but this is for me, how you navigate, um, I call it discipline. So it's not necessarily, you know, do this, do this, do this, do this, and everything's going to change. And, you know, you're going to become a better person and you're going to have more love in your life. It's more, um, well, I'll tell you the question. Um, body, what can I serve to you today? Just that. Body, what can I serve to you today? What can I get for you today? And the second question is um, me, like, who are you? What do you need more of today? And what do you need less of today? So this, this is my self-care every single day. I will ask myself these questions and sometimes I journal about it. And I'm going to get you to do this just now for just, just one minute of the what do you want less of and what do you want more of today? And this is changing every single day. So just take a minute to write that down. Drink some water and breathe. Yeah, 47 minutes in, I'm like, oh yeah, I need to breathe. <laughs> It's a good one. <laughs> so simply, what do I need more of? And what do I need less of? And that one as well, body, what can I serve to you today? And just think about what does your body want more than anything today? And if you want, you can just share into the chat. What does your body want more than anything today?
rest, movement and exercise. Nice. Wants kindness, nutrients and calm. Osha, good big breakfast. <laughs> Feeling you on that one. Patrick, good food. Any food particular in particular? Let's see if we can get specific. Amelia, to dance. Yes, I'm feeling you on the dance. Um, Patrick, feeling pleasure. Yes, who does not want to feel pleasure today? <laughs> uh, Tagarid, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. Body would like to relax and be in silence. Charlotte, water. Oh, shit, av avocado and eggs. Yes, Sophie, fajitas, Anthony, less carbs, Patrick, eggs, avocado, salmon. Oh, we should have an eggs and avocado party. <laughs> Jennifer, freshly squeezed juices. Oh, yes. Lisa, relax, sleep, less judgment of my partner. Oh, that's, that's a big one. Loving food, Elaine, green juice, stretch, water, dance. Sophie, green juice, nice. Yeah, when I asked my body that question at the same time, the answer was like, grapefruit, grapefruit, we want grapefruit, give us the grapefruit. Um, and this is something that's been popping up quite a lot for me lately, just a lot of citrus fruits. It's just some, your body answers you and the more you can tune in, the more you can listen. Um, you know, the body is really always talking to us and most of the time we don't listen. So the key is with this is to ask yourself this question and then listen. And you might not get the answer straight away. Um, you know, you could have been doing this for a hundred years and then one day you don't get an answer. So, you know, just keep checking in throughout the day and it will come because the body is always, the body is always wanting to communicate with us. Jennifer, I agree. Less judgment of my partner having spent four months 24-7. Oh my God, the lockdown. Charlotte, papaya. Nice. Um, fabulous. Yes. Okay. So yeah, it's really um, in the basics. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of amazing self-love techniques, a lot of concepts, like literally I have so many. And before this workshop, I was thinking, what is an ad advanced self-love technique? What actually is that? And, and honestly, the most advanced thing is just practicing the things that we know we need to do. So that's why I was like, right, practice. Okay. Um, so a couple more questions. Seeing as I've just seen someone say, I've just seen, I love these questions. It's very powerful. So I'm going to stick with the question theme. Um, what do you want to change to feel the way you want to feel? Or what do you need to change to feel the way you want to feel? And again, you can put it into the chat if you want, because it's, it's quite powerful to see everyone's replies. What do you want to change to feel the way you want to feel? Ooh, to be more pr productive, Amelia. Nice. And I think we have a time lag on the chat, which sometimes we do, but it's okay. And then secondly, what stands in the way of you loving yourself fully? What stand, and maybe it's nothing. Let's, you know, that could be a thing, but what stands in the way of you loving yourself fully? If anything. Maybe it's a whole list of things. Hmm. What stands in the way of you loving yourself fully? Oh, Patrick, thank you for typing those questions out. Useful. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, fabulous. So feel free to chair into the chat. And some of the things that come up, you know, it's like, oh, I need to be, my relationship needs to be the way I want it to be, or I need to be in a relationship, or I need to lose a certain amount of weight, or I need my body to be more fit, or I need to be more um, productive, or more this or less that. And, you know, it's this kind of hamster wheel, just like I was talking about 10 years ago of like, you know, I need to be more intelligent or I need to be more wealthy or more intelligent. It's kind of like the hamster wheel that never ends sometimes. Yeah. So just a quick reminder, unconditional self-love, unconditional self-love. So this is where there's no conditions to our love. And a couple of years ago, I was thinking about this. I was thinking about, I was thinking about loving another person. And I was like, I've always had this idea that it's, you know, working towards this unconditional love of a partner. And I was like, actually, is that actually in alignment with self-love? Because if I'm unconditionally loving a partner, I'm going to call him max if i'm unconditionally loving max and he starts to you know treat me like rubbish am i going to love him unconditionally is that self-loving i was like no oh, not really you know if he goes and kicks a dog am i gonna still love him like you know is that in alignment with with love and i started to question everything about oh there's a cat on the on the call please bring i always say this please bring your cute pets and kids to the calls <laughs> hello little cat no oh. yeah you know is if a partner it starts to act like this like are you still gonna love them i'm not like and i don't want to that's not in alignment with with who i am yeah there's a lot of things we can we can work on but you know, if they go and kill somebody, I'm probably not going to be there for that. And that actually comes back to more self-love. And so I started to question this, this concept of unconditional self-love. You can always unconditionally love, but from the distance. Yes. Yes. Oh shit. Yeah. So you can still love them, but choose not to be part of their reality or part of their life. To me, unconditional love doesn't mean unconditional tolerance. I feel yes. Yes, yes, yes. Totally. So when it comes back to unconditional love for self, it becomes quite interesting because, you know, the, like I just asked you before, what stands in the way of you fully loving yourself? If there's something that stands in the way, then it suggests that we're not unconditionally loving ourselves. So what is unconditional self-love? And I invite you after this after this ends to do a bit of journaling about this because it's quite deep and I, I did a massive exploration about this and one of the things that I came back to um, was that self-worth and self-love can never be attached to anything that can change so yeah like we're, we're literally born worthy and to kind of highlight this if you think of a baby coming into this world and you might have heard this before think of a baby you know a friend of mine's recently had a baby i'm not going around and saying prove yourself i'm not asking a baby to prove itself you know it's just naturally worthy likewise you know my nana is 92 and i go and see her every day at the moment and i'm not asking her to prove herself i'm not asking her to prove her worth or anything in in this world she's just naturally worthy you know but then somewhere in the middle often we get this kind of like oh we need to prove ourselves well we do you know we we feel we need to prove ourselves and it suggests that we're not in unconditional love and we're not in unconditional self-worth yeah so what was the point for you at what point did you start to question your worthiness? Like, can you remember how old you were? You can type it into the chat, your age. I'm trying to think what it was for me. I think 
seven school. school yeah i wonder if we weren't at school if we would still have these things Dis is school the problem <laughs> i don't know i think it's the it's the growing into the world and the age and the way we develop our intellect 10 11 7 7 yeah yeah interesting mm, yeah so unconditional like self-worth that's what i was talking about self-worth can never be attached to anything that can change so partnerships money business looks because that's always changing everything all those things are changing so it can't be attached to any of that it's quite empowering to actually think of that i think yeah Hmm. Okay, so I did mention earlier that I was going to come on to some clearing. And I believe like in every course that I do, in fact, I normally do this at the start of a workshop, but I forgot. So I'm bringing it in now. Um, in every retreat, in every course, in every everything, the first thing I often do is around forgiveness and clearing and kind of, I believe that if you think of like a wardrobe um, or a closet, depending on where you are in the world, um, think of it full of all clothes and you want to bring in some new clothes because you want to feel good and you want some new things and you want to like, you know, change how you feel. So you want to bring in some new clothes and you're trying to cram them into the wardrobe um, on hangers, but they're just kind of like getting lost in this sea of clothing and um, you can't find them. You know, you're just going like, where's the new things? Where's the new things? And they're just hidden in there. Um, but actually, if you clear out the clothes that don't fit you, the clothes that are ripped, the clothes you don't like, the old versions of you clothes, if you clear those all out first, shuck them, give them to charity and bring in the new things, you can see them really clearly, you can feel them, you can become them, you can wear them. You can try those beliefs on those stories like a new pair of clothing, new, new set of clothing. So let's quickly just clear the wardrobe. And what is it for you? What is hanging in that wardrobe of life that you could actually clear out? Is there any beliefs that you don't need anymore? Is there any habits? Is there any foods? Is there any people? Is there any anything? So I want you to just now quickly just write a little list. Is there anything that you want to clear today? Is there anything you want to clear? And if you want, you can write this on a separate piece of paper and you can burn it. I love a good burning ritual <laughs> or a stomping ritual. This is a new thing that I've, I've started doing, um, stomping it into the ground and then burning it. It's like a double whammy. And by the way, if you do any of these techniques, please tag me on social media. I love, 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 love seeing everyone's tags. And I think it makes other people want to see what this work is. Yeah. So what do you want to clear? What are you clearing today? And the clearing never ends. So I know there's some people in here that will hear me talking about clearing, clearing, clearing all the time. I've actually this morning on my iPhone, I was looking, you know, on iPhone, there's a, a section of the photos where you can go on faces and you can click on certain like friends or family's face and it brings up every picture you've ever taken of them. And I was like, oh my God, I've been doing loads of clearing around some ex-partners. Not, not that I've, you know, there's a few, <laughs> but some clearing around some ex-partners and deleting videos and stuff. And then I clicked into this faces thing and I was like, oh my God, they're all still there. So this morning I've just cleared out, you know, all these faces and it felt like, wow, I didn't even know on this thing that we hold very close to us that these ex-partners were still there you know, and so it's all energy. It's all, it's all there and we can clear it. Okay. So when you've got a few things on that list and you can always add to this afterwards, I know there's a lot of workshops at this festival, but it's the implementation. Remember it's the doing it that actually makes it work. So definitely add to this list and burn it and stomp it. So another thing here is forgiveness. 
self-forgiveness. And a very, very quick little thing. It's an absolute classic. It's a Gina classic, this one. It's um, to write the sentence, I am yet to forgive myself for. I am yet to forgive myself for. And just write that down. And then anything that comes to mind, big or small, from the past, from recent, anything that comes to mind, I am yet to forgive myself for. And the key is here, you don't need to forgive yourself right now. You just need to be aware of it. Linda, that I'm not worthy. Can you forgive yourself for that one? Yeah, that's a good one to notice. And all these things that we um, carry on our shoulders, you know, they're like big, imagine yourself walking with big blocks on your shoulders and your shoulders are aching and you're just like, Arr. so we're just seeing these blocks for what they are right now. And a lack of self-forgiveness is uh you know i think a huge 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 block to why a lot of people don't love themselves it's like a huge chunk in the wardrobe that can be removed because we have the we have full control on forgiveness of ourselves even if we think we don't this is how we empower ourselves knowing even if it's hard and i have you know women who come in and they do this work and and they sit there and they tell me, oh, I just can't, I just cannot forgive myself for this thing. And when we go into it and when we talk about it, what tends to happen, um, because I always mention this thing, you know, you were always doing your best with what you had available at the time. And when you look back in hindsight, you can be like, what a stupid idiot thing to do that was. Like, why did I do that? Or why was I being so mean? Or not empathetic or whatever it is but ultimately we were always doing our best with what we had available and at that time and even if you know one of the stories that got shared recently in one of our group calls was that a woman had been having this mad affair you know and breaking up this whole family and this was quite triggering to me because this is in my family, the story with um, my step, my, my dad ran off with this woman and it kind of broke up our family. And um, yeah, so it was quite a intensely charged conversation we were all have, having. And this woman was like, I, ca I just can't forgive myself for what I've done. And, but who is the only person who, who is, making that happen and who is that helping it's not helping her it's not helping him it's not helping the people that it's hurt and ultimately everything's happening for us and not to us and so there's a reason everything's happening and sometimes like i now know this of my stepmom she gets to play the villain in my narrative and you know it doesn't make her a bad person it doesn't make anyone a bad person it's just, it's just what is. So this forgiveness piece is huge. It's a huge chunk to take out of the cosmic wardrobe as, as the example I gave shows. So what is it for you? What are you not forgiving yourself for? <sighs> and what, what is standing in the way of you forgiving yourself? And also, who is it helping to hold this burden on your shoulders, if anything? Okay, and if anyone wants to share anything in the chat, you're very welcome to share anything anytime. And also, how is this going for you? Are you enjoying this? Is this something you, you know, is this something you've learned something about yourself? Is there anything, any light bulbs going off? Let me know. It's always nice to 
to get an idea. I'm loving it. Fantastic. Thank you for that. <laughs> okay. So. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So when I said this, this workshop was going to be advanced self-love techniques, and then I had this realization that the, the most advanced things are actually the simple things and practicing them. And one of the things that came to me was this concept of, you know, we all have things that we want to tweak or change or struggle with in our lives. And so I want you to just write down really quickly. Um, what, what are you struggling with? Always love learning from you. Thank you, Elaine. Jennifer, always love learning from you. Lovely, 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 making me think in a good way, Kathleen. Wonderful. Um, yeah, so what are you struggling with? So this could be a pattern that keeps coming up for you, or it could be, um, you know, what's your, what's your life lesson that you're trying to learn right now? Or it could be a body image thing, or it could be a partner or, you know, what is it that you're struggling with right now? And if you're not struggling with anything, you know, we don't need to create problems. And it's worth saying here, um, yeah, I learned, I'm not sure where I learned this from, but I, I think I read it in a book. Um, and it said, you know, the only problem or the only challenge we have is the one we're attached to. So we had a problem before and we'll have a problem after and we have a problem now. And, but, you know, they're always moving all the time. And the only problem we actually have is the one we're attached to right now. And so when I saw that, I was like, oh my God, that's so true. And so if we just don't attach to the problem, you know, they just kind of go by and we're always working on things, but they just go by. Yeah. So, um, oh, I feel safe asking these questions within the space you created. Thank you, Charlotte. Um, what was your problem before this problem? Oh, sure. You have a great sense of humor. Um, even as a coach, it's great to go through someone else's processes and practices, Anthony. Yay. Um, yeah, I love doing that too. Yeah, we're, we're the eternal learners. Yeah, so what are you working on? What are you struggling with? Um, and also, this is a good one. What body or face part, <laughs> sounds really weird, but that was the way it came out, is the hardest for you to love of your physical body or appearance or you know what is the hardest part for you to love and I do this in retreats um well I started doing it in retreats and then I decided that it was so powerful that I needed to do it um on workshops as well it's a it's a big process it takes about an hour but I'm just gonna like chunk it down into like one minute right now and so yeah, the first thing of this, of this kind of thing, what's difficult to love is to go back and see what's your first ever memory of this being a problem. So if this is, um, you know, say for me that a big challenge, not so much now, but in the past was that I always wanted to um be more toned like I always wanted to weigh less I'm quite I'm curvy and tall and big and I always wanted to be this petite brunette <laughs> and actually I'm like a busty blonde but anyway um yeah so going back I can pinpoint like the first time that was like an issue for me so what was the first time that that was a problem for you in your life can you go back and actually think of a time or a story hmm. 
And if it's a struggle in your life, like if, if you're really struggling with something, if you're struggling with procrastination in business or if you're struggling with health or whatever it is, like what was the first time that that became a thing? And what's the story attached to it? And kind of simply asking the question, you know, oh, th this is the other thing. How long, how many years has this story been affecting you for? So how long have you been holding on to this thing and, and letting it play out? So for me, that was, you know, from about the age of, I think, 12, I decided I was too big and I needed to be smaller for me to feel love. And, you know, so 12 to like 34, that means I had a... What, how many years is that? It's a, it's a lot of years. A lot of years I was holding on to that story until I brought conscious awareness to it and then released it. So you can type into the chat, how many years have you been holding on to this story, whatever it is for you? If you can do the maths, which I will admit I couldn't just do on the spot right then. <laughs> how many years have you been holding on to this story that has been keeping you small or trapped in, in something that is a choice? About 10 years, 33 years, 40 years. Oh, good old 40 year story. 40 years, it makes me SAF. I know what that means. Yes, sad, AF. <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, when you kind of look at things from this point of view, it's like, oh yeah, how many more years am I willing to let this story play out for? And just bringing some conscious awareness to it and being like, hmm, actually, you know, I'm not really uh, looking to have that story playing out for many more years. Um, so the next little question of this is, is there any reason for you to hold on to this story? Is there any, any reason that you want to carry on holding on to this story? And if anyone does have any reasons, because our ego does want to challenge this, post it into the chat. Feel free. Oh my God, we're running out of time and I've still got a bazillion things I want to share with you and make you practice. <laughs> oh, well, you'll just have to sign up for my course and then you get eight weeks with me. <laughs> um, yeah. So is there any reason that you want to carry on holding on to this story for you? To your choice you're the driver of your spaceship you're the boss of your life and you have full choice as we explained as i explained before <laughs> elaine brilliant course elaine is in my 12 steps course and another course actually yeah um yeah so is there any reason you want to carry on holding on to this and then also what do you choose instead so what do you now want to believe or what story do you want to believe or what do you want to choose instead? And the key part of this, I just signed up to the 12 Steps Self Love Transformation. Woohoo, Linda. That's good. Good to know. I love it when people join. Like every time someone joins, I literally run around my garden doing the happy dance because I know they're going to join and love it. I actually can't believe how well it's gone. And I know I probably shouldn't say that as a creator, but when I created it, I thought it was going to be good. But actually, it's like way more good than I thought it was going to be. Um, yeah, I'm saying this as well because I just did some feedback videos the other day and everyone was telling me their light bulb moments. And I was like, oh my God, I did a thing. And people actually transform from this. Um, self love course, the life changer. Woo, -hoo. here it is. So, um, yeah, the key part of this is what we tend to do with this thing that's the most challenging in our life is we're like, ah, so annoying, this thing's so annoying, like, why is this still happening to me? And actually, that's the exact thing that's stopping us from moving through it. So how can you turn your vibration into unconditional love? Be like, oh, you're so cute. 
this thing is still happening. You know, I'm going to love you anyway. I'm going to love the shit out of you anyway. Like turning it to cute is the, is the antidote. It's like, oh, there's this cute little child that still lives within you. And how can I just love that little part of you? And when you turn it to cute, you get away from the critic. The critic's the one that's like, oh, you should know better. You've been practicing this for years. Turn it to cute and everything changes. There's actually a chapter in my book about this. Cute versus critic. So yeah, turn it to cute, turn it to self-love. How can you turn it to self-love? And then beam that love down on yourself. And that is the key. The key is always self-love. We know this. Underneath everything is self-love. And so anytime you're feeling that resistance or like annoyance, it's time to turn it back to self-love. And honestly, if you're doing that and you're practicing that in every area of your life, everything's changing because when you're in that love frequency, you're a higher vibration, better thoughts are, are attracted to you or you're attracted to them, better foods, better people, more helpful people, everything. You're in manifesting mode when you're in the love frequency. Yeah. Okay. Um, conscious of time and I do want to open to questions by the way th if you've got any questions coming up um, think about them maybe even write them down now because I'm going to open to questions in a minute okay so a few little more tips and hacks and tricks and things um, is um, which one shall I go for okay yeah um, first one is reminders on your phone so this is for me such a key thing like I'm such a forgetful person the human am amnesia sets in like every day you know I could just have taught a workshop about something and then later on I'll be like god this is so annoying and I'm like oh yeah I need to remember what I teach um you know so having reminders on your phone right so I'm just going to show you and I actually want you to set one of these now if you can, if you're on your phone. I'm not sure about Android, but there's this little thing here, reminders. If you click on that, I have like so many of these um, that come up sometimes every week, sometimes every day. Things like, uh, what's, what's a good one? Um, a good one is, it's all perfect. Everything exactly as it should be and is, is about to become even more perfect. That comes up every week on my phone. And then another one is um, movement is sexy. <laughs> that comes up every day on my phone. And then another one is Gina, you are the gift just as you are. Nothing more to do. That comes up. And um, another one for me, simple light food, feel great. You know, the, these things, I just need constant reminders of the things that I've learned because I have this human amnesia, which I know. Who, who has human amnesia, by the way? Put your hand up if you get that. Yeah, it's so when we like learn something, we're like, oh my God, this is the key, this is the answer. And then two weeks later, we're doing the opposite and we're like, wait, what happened? Oh yeah, I, I lost my mind again. So these things are to remind you to... Um, not have human amnesia. So is it an app? It's, it's inbuilt on iPhone. It's called Reminders. I'm sure there's plenty of apps that do this as well. That's what I've got you for. Yes, Osha. Osha is one of my best friends and we remind each other of these things, things constantly. So set a reminder on your phone. Has anyone done it already? Hand up if you've done it. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. So again, feel free to screenshot that and tag me if it comes up and you're like, oh my God, I had forgotten that. So reminders on the phone. Um, the next one is laptop password. Who has a laptop? Who's on a laptop? Laptop people? Right. Go onto your laptop password and change it to the one thing that you are manifesting. So mine, <laughs> for the, when I learned this hack, uh, it was um, loaded. I changed it to loaded because I was trying to, I was wanting to manifest like abundance. It could have been abundance, but the word that came to me was loaded. Like loaded in Manchester lang language means like, you know, rich, <laughs> got a lot of money. And that's what I was working on right then. And honestly, like 
that has happened since then. So, you know, this hack works. More recently, I changed it. The new thing at the start of this year, I decided that I wanted to manifest for the first time in my life was husband. Like I've never wanted to get married before, but in January I had this download. I was like, yeah, I want that. That's what I really want. So I changed my laptop password to husband and yeah, I'll let you know when that one comes in. So what is your laptop password going to be? Post it into the chat. Let's have a look. What are you, what is the next thing you're manifesting? And just think about how many times do you type that in a day? For me, it's a lot because I work on laptop, lap, lap, laptop lifestyle. Every time I go to type abundant, um, to type loaded and then it's like, uh -uh, and I have to type husband and I'm like, ah, yes. Oh, sexy. I like that. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. So keep on writing those into the thingamabob. Personal, professional purpose. Nice. Yeah. No one's going to, no one's going to guess that one. Um, amazing. Yes. Okay. So the next little hack is this technique called 55 by five. Has anyone heard of this? Give me a hand. Elaine has, cause I taught it to her. <laughs> okay. So 55 by five is a technique. It's a manifestation technique, which let's be honest, self-love and manifestation go absolutely hand in hand, which I have a whole course on if you were, if you're wondering how that goes hand in hand. Um, but 55 by five is a technique and it's similar to did anyone ever get lines at school when they were naughty hands up <gasps> naughty people i never got lines at school i'll just say i was a good girl and never got lines but this technique is about lines so what i want you to do is write one quick affirmation well it doesn't have to be an affirmation but whatever you're drawing into your life in the present tense so for me, this is, um, what is my recent one? I'm so grateful that I attracted my um, partner who meets me on every level. So what is yours? So write down one little line and pro tip, don't make it too long because I'm going to get you to write it 55 times after this call. <laughs> And this technique, I'll give you one minute to write that actually. I'll give you 30 seconds to write that actually, because we're running out of time. This technique, my friends, is a game changer. It might seem really silly. And at first I was like, yeah, this is stupid. But then I did it and it worked. And then I told all my friends and they all did it and it worked. People were manifesting money. People were manifesting clients. People were manifesting sex. People were manifesting weight loss. All these things just like poof, straight off the bat. And if you're wondering how this works, type in 55 by 5 into Google and just read the reviews. There's success story after success story after success story so how it works what's the question to ask again um it is to write the thing that you're drawing into your life or you know whatever you're working on or whatever you want to manifest write a little line about it in the present tense so it's easy to start with i'm so grateful that and then whatever you're wanting to happen but it's already happened um, my example was, I'm so grateful that I have, um, I can't remember exactly what I said now, that I, um, have met, no, that's not it. I forgot what it is. My example was, I'm so grateful that I, um, get to spend my life with my partner who meets me on every level. And then you write it out 55 times for five days. And the key is you've got to do it in one chunk per day takes about half an hour if your affirmation's not half a page long like my friend abby did and it took her days <laughs> so as you're doing it you are feeling into that future version of you that fractal of your future reality that already has this thing and you're just allowing it to sink in and it's really cool and actually really fun to do it so this only works if you do it so make sure you go do it 
And if you do do it, tag me in a picture and let me know how it goes. Okay, I've got so many other things I want to tell you, but I'm running out of time. So I'm going to open this to questions. If anyone has anything they want to say, you can totally come off mute and or you can type into the chat and I can answer anything for you. Um, any questions that want anyone want to come off mute? I love you, Osha. Anybody? Is there a difference between self-acceptance and self-love? Ooh, nice question. What do you think? <laughs> what does everyone think? Mm, is there a difference? I think they go very, very hand in hand. Um, yeah, my brain actually can't work on that question right now. <laughs> Is there a difference? Is there a difference? I think they're very, very related. You know, if you are in full acceptance of everything that you are and everything that you do and everything that you're becoming and, you know, every way that you look, um, you, you, you are in self-love. If there's something you're not accepting, then you're not in unconditional self-love. What did Osha say? Osha, by the way, is my angel oracle who, when I can't think in any of my courses, she thinks for me. So if you don't accept yourself, you love your self-love can't be unconditional. Boom, <laughs> we're aligned. Um, seems to me self-acceptance is part of self-love. Self-love includes growth to right. Yes, all the above. Um, yeah, I think self-acceptance is a great place to start. You, I think if you are... Um, yeah, if you are just accepting, 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 your self-love is growing. Uh, I don't think you can be accepting and your self-love isn't growing. <clears throat> I think they go synony synonymously. Yeah. Um, I, see self I see acceptance as being at peace with who you are, but love is taking that further and actually embracing those things. Mm, nice, Amelia. Very nice. Any other questions or anything you want to bring into the space? Or would anybody like to share any light bulb that came up for them? It'd be lovely to hear from somebody. Oh yeah, Anthony. Hello, Anthony. Oh, I think I just did that thing. Yeah, Hi. Go. Hi. So it was a quick question. Um... So a few, and, and you might be able to answer this for me. So a few years ago, I did a seminar where uh, the coach said that um, there are three existential stories that people tell themselves in relation to like self-love. Mm -hmm. and, and one of them is like, uh, why don't people like me? Or, and the other one is I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. And I can never remember the third one. And so, and we've all, everybody's got one of these three stories that they will tell themselves like subconsciously. Um, and just to shine some light on that is to obviously be aware of it and then to make it less of an issue. But from what I've just gathered, you know, if you can deep, you know, dive deep into your, to your brain, I wonder if you could figure out the third one. So it's, why don't people like me? I'm not good enough what might be the third one i know it's not your content but i mean it's such a fundamental uh thing that underlines yeah. self-love mm, interesting uh, yeah it, uh, let's open this to everyone and see what everyone thinks um the first thing that comes to me which yeah is it's something about fitting in like why don't i fit in possibly um yeah, I find that from a lot of, of people that I've coached that they just feel they're different to everyone. Um, you know, growing up being the black sheep or as I like to say, the sparkly sheep of the family. And then when you meet in, you know, containers like this with all the sparkly sheep, you realize, or with all the black sheep, you realize that you're actually cosmic as fuck. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's the thing that came to me. But what does everyone else think? Oh, people don't see me for who I am, not capable of seeing all parts of me. Ooh, juicy. Um, hello, dear cosmic black sheep. Love you. Yes. We're all probably, does anyone relate to that being the bit of a black sheep? Yeah. 
so cute. We're all just imagine us a, a field full of like multicolored sheep right now, just like, yes, we found each other. <laughs> Cosmic AF, for sure. Um, okay, so thank you for that, Anthony. That yeah, I'm gonna think about that some more. I'll be honest, my brain is like, I'm ready for my breakfast. So um, I'm gonna think about that some more and, and come back to you. But that was a really good question. And I, I'm interested to know who that coach is and you know. But it also interesting to think you probably forgot that for a reason. <laughs> it's probably one of those two was the one for you or that one didn't exist. Um, great. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to post into the chat my information um, there. And um, yeah, thank you so much for coming today and being on this little journey and also doing the work and going into some things and sharing uh, this has been a little bit different to my other workshops because I really felt I wanted to make you do some stuff and also do it myself. So there in the chat, I've just posted my Instagram, um, my website, and also today, well, not just today, for this week until the recordings come out, I'm offering 30% off my 12-step self-love transformation. So um, there's a few ladies that have already been in it on this call. Um, and yeah, it's awesome. So I'll, I'll, I'll speak to anyone after who wants to, uh, be part of that. And it's a real deep dive and every resource that you could possibly imagine towards to do with self-love. And it's like a light bulb factory, like the light bulbs will come on as you go through that course. So if you're interested in doing that, um, get in touch and also some other offerings that I do, I do one-to-one -one coaching, um, with self-love and then also with business. So if you want to expand your business, I do um, for the love of biz business and 80% uh, of that is self-love and 20% is strategy. And then what else? Yeah, all sorts of retreats in Bali, Ibiza, England, Portugal, all sorts of courses. And yeah, but more than that, I just love to um, hear from people. So feel free to reach out to me, tell me where you're at in your life. And yeah, I'm totally fascinated by what makes people happy and what makes people sad. And yeah, so feel free to reach out. Let me know how this workshop was for you and tag me in all your things because I'd love to see that. Yeah, so I'll leave it there. I've totally gone over, which was a bit naughty, but whatever. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I think if anyone is, am I supposed to be asking people to stay on and give a testimonial? Is that a thing? Uh, no, I will. Oh, I will. Okay. So, so, so I would like to thank all the participants to, uh, for attending this workshop. And if there is anyone who would like to uh, record a testimonial about this workshop or the festival, um, they can stay uh, in the call and I'll record them. Uh, apart from that, uh, uh, I hope you enjoyed the workshop and uh, Gina, I need a few minutes of your time uh, uh, after the testimonials as well. Fab. I'll be here. <laughs> Thank you. Hearts, cosmic hearts. Enjoy the rest of the festival, everyone, and be in touch. I love you. Thank you.